you see we have been looking at uh, the point at infinity and what we have seen uh, is uh, the situation when infinity is an isolated singularity okay and I have already told you what happens uh, when infinity is a uh, removable singularity or infinity is a pole uh, and even more generally we have also seen uh, the so called uh, residue theorem for the uh, external complex plane okay. So, the point that one has to remember is that uh, the, residue, the residue theorem for the external complex plane which we discussed in the last lecture in that the contribution uh, of the residue at infinity will always be there okay irrespective of uh, whether the point at infinity is a, uh, a removable singularity or a pole or an essential singularity. So, the issue is that you know even if uh, infinity is a removable singularity okay for example for the function f of w equal to 1 by w okay infinity uh, is uh, w equal to infinity is uh, a removable singularity okay because the function tends to 0 as w tends to infinity uh, but still the residue at infinity is not 0 okay which is which does not happen for a point in the usual plane in the complex plane uh, at a point at which uh, the function has a removable singularity is a point where the function can be redefined so that it becomes analytic and therefore if you integrate the if you calculate the residue at that point you will get 0 okay whereas this ha does not happen for the point at infinity that is one point that you should and uh, always keep in mind. Now we are going to talk about the situation when infinity is an essential singularity okay. So, uh, so what does it mean to say that uh, infinity is an essential singularity. So, basically you are looking at uh, a function for which uh, the point at infinity is a singular point an isolated singular point okay that means it is defined in a neighborhood of infinity in a deleted neighborhood of infinity and it is analytic in a deleted neighborhood of infinity which means that basically you are looking at an analytic function which is analytic outside a circle of sufficiently large radius okay and because that is what a neighborhood of infinity is okay you know that via the stereographic projection. Now, uh, what does it mean to say that the function has uh, infinity as an essential singularity it, it, this is the same as saying there are, there are two ways of saying it of course uh, uh, in fact three ways of saying it and all the three uh, ways of saying it are correct. Uh, so, there is one way which is using the Laurent expansion at infinity. So, uh, you, if so, one way of saying that infinity is an essential singularity is by saying that the Laurent if you take the Laurent expansion at infinity then uh, the the you know the um, uh, the singular part has infinitely many terms okay and there what you must remember is that the singular part is actually the polynomial part I mean it is the uh, if you expand it in powers of uh, the variable okay if w is a variable okay then you are going to expand the function uh, in positive and negative powers of w okay and you should look at an expansion which is valid outside a circle of sufficiently large radius mind you that is the Laurent expansion in uh, a neighborhood of infinity okay and uh, because you are looking at the point in at infinity uh, the positive powers the, the terms involving positive powers of w that is a singular part okay that is a singular part and the terms involving the constant and the negative powers of w is the analytic part because that because negative powers of w behave well at infinity okay. So, uh, the condition for the function to have uh, uh, infinity as an essential singular point is that if you write out uh, its Laurent expansion in a sufficient out, which is valid outside uh, at all points outside a sufficiently uh, a, a, a circle of sufficiently large radius centered at the origin okay then you must get uh, you must get uh, 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 the, uh, uh, the the positive powers of the variable that occur they must be there must be infinitely many terms okay which is the same as saying that the singular part at infinity has infinitely many terms and uh, uh, so what you what should not happen is that the singular part has only finitely many terms at infinity which means that it is the singular part is actually a polynomial okay. So, uh, in other words what we are saying is that you know how do you recognize that uh, function has infinity as an essential singular point you write out the Laurent expansion at infinity 
bilinear neighborhood of infinity then what happens is that the uh, the singular part is not just a polynomial okay. In particular what this means is that if you take polynomial functions they are certainly not going to have infinity as an essential singularity and you know that we have seen it last time a polynomial, a polynomial of degree uh, 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 polynomials in fact have infinity as a pole and the order of the pole is actually the degree of the polynomial okay. So that is so this is one way of defining uh, infinity as an you know essential singular point the, of course the other way is that uh, the limit of the function as you approach uh, infinity does not exist okay uh, that is also uh, correct okay. So usually there are three characterizations one of any singular point there are three characterizations one is uh, you look at the Laurent series uh, and uh, look at the condition on the Laurent series whether it has uh, uh, no terms at all uh, in the singular part or whether it has finitely many terms in the singular part or whether it has infinitely many terms in the singular part and then the second condition is on the limit of the function as you approach that point okay. Of course the third condition is about the boundedness of the function okay or the unboundedness of the function but of course uh, the boundedness is equivalent to the uh, to the point being a removable singularity okay and the unboundedness means that it is either uh, it could either be a pole or an essential singularity okay. So, uh, so let, let me write these uh, these points down uh, infinity as an essential singularity of f of w. So you see um, so f of w is assumed to be uh, uh, analytic in uh, a deleted neighborhood of infinity okay that is that is a standard assumption blanket assumption and well um, so uh, so what are the conditions well um, you you write uh, the Laurent expansion expansion of f at infinity uh, that is uh, f of w equal to sigma n equal to minus infinity to infinity a n w power n uh, valid in a deleted neighborhood of infinity has uh, 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 infinitely term infinitely many terms in its singular part and what is the singular part the singular part is uh, uh, sigma uh, the singular part is uh, the positive powers of the variable so it is sigma n equal to 1 to infinity a n w power n and that is the same as saying that uh, a uh, a n uh, not equal to 0 for uh, many infinitely many n for infinitely many n okay. So, uh, and and you see this 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 definition is uh, just the same as usual definition that the that up to in order to say that a certain point uh, in for example in the complex plane which is an isolated singularity is an essential singularity all you have to uh, do is write out the Laurent expansion at that point and then you find that the Laurent expansion has infinite singular part there, okay and there it will be infinitely many negative powers okay. So, uh, so of course I should tell you that this is equivalent. Uh, to uh, uh, f of uh, g of z is equal to f of 1 by z has uh, an essential singularity at 0 ok. So, g of z is f of 1 by z has an essential singularity singularity. At the at zero, at z is equal to zero, okay. And this is of course you know uh, this is of course based on this philosophy that you know 
the behavior of f of w at infinity is the same as the behavior of f of uh, 1 by z at 0 okay where you put w equal to 1 by z that is a you we already know that this is a homeomorphism okay and uh, it is a holomorphic isomorphism of the punctured plane uh, the plane minus the origin onto itself okay and okay so this is one thing uh, then the other thing is uh, uh, so this is one condition the other condition is uh, uh, limit w tends to infinity f of w does not exist this is uh, this is this this is this is the other condition and of course this is the same as saying that limit z tends to 0 uh, g of z does not exist so this is also something that you know and um, so uh, uh, well and of course the uh, the usually we'll have another condition which will be on the behavior of the function in the neighborhood of that point and uh, well uh, certainly uh, uh, you cannot expect the function to be bounded in a neighborhood of that point okay um, because that is equivalent to the function being uh, uh, actually analytic at that point and that is Riemann's removable singularity theorem right. Um, anyway so so, so let me let me uh, let me go ahead and say some some other things. Um, so maybe uh, I'll I'll put some I'll change color and put a few boxes here. Um, so so this is equivalent to this and this part is the same as this. All right. So now, uh, what I want to say next, what I want to say next is that you know, uh, let's look at let's let's analyze this condition that infinity is an essential singularity. Okay. Now, the uh, so for example, what are the functions? Uh, what are the entire functions which have infinity as an essential singularity? You can ask this question. Okay. So we have already answered uh, a similar question for uh, poles. Okay and for uh, removable singularities see you take an entire function mind you an entire function means a function which is analytic on the whole plane okay and the moment it is analytic on the whole plane the whole plane is also mind you a deleted neighborhood of the point at infinity you must not forget that therefore a function which is analytic on the whole plane is also having infinity as an isolated singular point okay automatically okay uh, if you think of the Riemann stereographic projection you see that the infinity corresponds to the north pole and the whole plane corresponds to the remaining uh, 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 part on the Riemann sphere which is the Riemann sphere minus the north pole okay by the stereographic projection. So the plane itself is a uh, neighborhood of uh, the point at infinity and uh, therefore an entire function will always have the point at infinity as an isolated singularity. Now what happens if uh, the, that isolated singularity is a removable singularity? well then you are saying that the entire function has infinity as a removable singularity okay which is the same as saying that infinity at infinity it is bounded or it has a limit okay and then uh, by Liouville's theorem it will reduce to a constant okay. So the moral of the story is that a non-constant entire function cannot have uh, infinity as a removable singularity we have already seen this okay and then you can ask the question when will an entire function have uh, infinity as a pole okay and uh, we have seen that that will happen if and only if the entire function is a is a well uh, 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 is a polynomial okay uh, and the degree of the polynomial will be the order of the pole okay. So now we ask the question when will an entire function have infinity as an essential singularity and the answer to that will be that uh, the if you uh, it should not be a polynomial okay. Basically if you write out the uh, if you write out its uh, well Taylor expansion at any point the Taylor expansion uh, of course you will get if you, you 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 have to write only a Taylor expansion because it is an entire function okay there is no question of Laurent expansion okay. Uh, so at any point in the you choose any point in the plane it is analytic everywhere the plane so you choose any point and write the Taylor expansion at that point that Taylor series will have infinite radius of convergence because uh, this function is entire okay 
and the point is that the Taylor series should be a power series it should not be a polynomial ok. So the moral of the story is uh, yeah an entire function has infinity as an essential singularity if and only if its Taylor series is not a polynomial ok. So uh, and, 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 and uh, the Taylor series of an entire function being a polynomial is the same as the entire function itself being a polynomial ok. Therefore all you are saying is that uh, you know an entire function uh, 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 we, uh, if you want it to have an essential singularity at infinity ok then it should not be a polynomial alright and for this reason uh, we call such entire functions as transcendental ok. Uh, so the, the usually uh, uh, the polynomial functions and the meromorphic functions which are given by quotients of polynomials ok they are called algebraic and everything that is not algebraic is called transcendental. So such entire functions which have infinity as an essential singular point are called transcendental entire functions ok. So, uh, so let me write that down um, uh, an entire function uh, that has uh, infinity as uh, an uh, essential singularity is one that is not a polynomial ok. So um, and you know what will happen if it is a polynomial if it is a polynomial infinity is a uh, infinity is a pole ok if it is a polynomial of positive degree of course if you if we also consider constants as polynomials polynomials of degree 0 and uh, that is the case of a constant function. So if you are looking at a non constant entire function ok then it is uh, uh, the only way it infinity is an essential singularity is that it is not a polynomial of positive degree ok. Uh, so for a polynomial uh, uh, if constant uh, uh, has infinity as a removable singularity. and if non constant has infinity as a pole of order equal to its degree ok. So a polynomial is certainly uh, not an entire function that has an essential singularity at infinity and conversely if an entire function has an essential singularity at infinity because you take any point and you write out the Taylor expansion at that point uh, 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 you will see that uh, if infinity is a is uh, is a pole then the Taylor expansion should terminate so and it has to be a polynomial. So if infinity is not a pole then your Taylor series uh, will have infinitely many terms ok which is the same as saying that there are uh, infinitely many terms in the Laurent expansion at infinity ok. Mind you uh, if you take a polynomial uh, the polynomial itself is expansion is the Taylor expansion of the function that it represents at the origin ok and the and since that expansion is valid on the whole plane it is also a Laurent expansion at infinity the, the expression for the polynomial itself is a Laurent expansion at infinity and it is except for the constant part the positive part the terms involving positive powers of the variable that is automatically the singular part at infinity and and that it has only finitely many terms tells you that infinity is a pole ok. So, so let me write that down um, uh, conversely if f of w uh, has infinity as uh, an essential singularity. then its Taylor expansion at any point of C has to have uh, 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 at any point of C 
has to have uh, infinitely many uh, infinitely infinitely many terms. So, it is not a polynomial. Okay. So, uh, so uh, uh, to say things in short, uh, a transcendental entire function is something that is different from a polynomial. Now, you, I want to make the following statement that take any entire function, okay, uh, take any entire function, exponentiate it. Okay. So, you take f of w to be an entire function. Okay. f of w may have infinity as a uh, uh, you know either a pole or it may be essential. But if you take e power f of w, okay, if you take e power f of w, I claim that it will always be transcendental. Okay. So, that means I am saying that for e power f of w, w equal to infinity will always be a, an essential singularity. Okay. That is also very easy to see and, and how do you see it? Uh, let me tell you the argument in words. Uh, you see, uh, so I know that f of w is entire and I am looking at e power f of w. Okay. Of course, e power f of w is also entire because it is a composition of entire functions. Exponential function is of course entire. Okay. And e power f of w is f of w followed by the exponential function, it is a composition of entire function, so it is entire. Okay. And uh, what are the possibilities for e power f of w at infinity? Infinity can either be a removable singularity or it can be a pole or it can be an essential singularity. If infinity is a removable singularity, you know then e power f of w must be a constant because of Liouville's theorem. And if e power f of w is a constant, then f has to be a constant because f is uh, of if e power f w is a constant that constant is a complex number which cannot be 0 because e ne, the exponential function never takes the value 0 and f has to be log of that okay f can be one of the logarithms of that constant non zero constant okay and so uh, so so in that case uh, e power f uh, so what I am trying to say is that if you are looking at an entire function, a non constant entire function, okay, e power f has to be transcendental. Okay. The, the only case you will have to uh, worry about is uh, the constant function, when of course e power a constant is also constant. Okay. So, if you have a non constant entire function, okay, uh, e power f also will be non constant. All right. So, infinity uh, for e power uh, f, if infinity is a removable singularity then f is a constant. So, if you are looking at a non constant f then e power f will not have infinity as a removable singularity. So, it can be a pole. Now, if e power f is a, is a pole has a pole at infinity, uh, infinity is a pole for e power f then e power f has to be a polynomial because we have seen that the only entire functions which have a pole at infinity are the pol are pol polynomials. So, e power f has to be a polynomial but that is not possible. Because you see, uh, if you take a polynomial of constant, uh, a non-constant polynomial, column polynomial of positive degree, the you know fundamental theorem of algebra says that it will have zeros. So there are there are it will assume the value zero, but that is equal to e power f, and e e power anything can never be zero. Okay, therefore e power f cannot be a polynomial. All right, that means that infinity cannot be a pole for e power f. So therefore the only thing that is left is that e power f should have infinity as an essential singularity. So, the moral of the story is that you take any non constant entire function and you take e power that the resulting function will certainly have infinity as an essential singularity. In other words, I am saying that the resulting function it will always be transcendental. Okay. So, uh, so let me write that down. Um, um, okay. So, let me use a different color. Um, uh, yeah, uh, an entire function that has uh, infinity as uh, an essential singularity it 
is called okay. an entire function that has infinity as an essential singularity is called transcendental and uh, so all entire functions which are which are not polynomials are transcendental okay. uh, thus uh, the uh, entire functions uh, the, the transcendental entire functions are precisely the non polynomials precisely those that are not polynomials. Um, uh, if f of w uh, is entire and non constant, then e power f of w is always transcendental. Uh, for uh, if e power f w has w equal to infinity as a removable singularity then e power f w reduces to a constant by Liouville and uh, contradicts uh, f being non constant also e per f also infinity cannot be a pole as uh, then e power f would be a polynomial which must have zeros. Okay. So, that also cannot happen. So, as a result uh, you take any entire function and you which is not constant and you exponentiate it what you get is a transcendental entire function ok. Uh, so, in this uh, so in this context let me also say that you know the uh, the entire function the, the, the functions which are either which are either polynomials or quotients of polynomials ok uh, they are called uh, uh, meromorphic functions they are all called algebraic and the non algebraic functions are the transcendental ones ok. So, uh, so let me write that in general uh, the, uh, uh, the polynomials and more generally uh, the meromorphic functions. the extended plane are called algebraic ok this is at least uh, uh, in the sense of algebraic geometry ok uh, in the sense of complex algebraic Uh, the the non algebraic ones 
uh, ones are called transcendent. Uh, examples uh, examples of transcendental functions uh, this is something that uh, uh, one should uh, look at uh, so so you take uh, for example e power z okay this is transcendental because z uh, z equal to infinity is an essential singular point and why is that so because uh, basically if you write the expansion for e power z Taylor expansion or Maclaurin expansion which is a Taylor expansion at the origin you write the usual expansion that we all know and you know it has infinitely many terms okay. So uh, e power z and then similarly you can take uh, the trigonometric functions you can take sin z you can take cos z and so on okay. So these are all transcendental functions. And uh, the way of course you know you can also see that infinity is a, an essential singular point because uh, if you change if you invert the variable you will get origin as the essential singular point. So if you take e power 1 by z uh, is origin will be an essential singular point if you take sin 1 by z origin will be an essential singular point if you take cos 1 by z uh, origin will be an essential singular point okay. So, so these are examples of transcendental functions and uh, the uh, the other thing that I wanted to tell you is that uh, I, I want to also recall uh, the, the big Picard theorem in this uh, in this connection okay. Take now you see uh, you know uh, uh, take an entire function take an entire function which is not constant okay. Uh, of course if infinity is a uh, infinity cannot be removable because if, if infinity is a, is a removable singularity uh, then it will reduce to a constant since I have taken a non constant entire function infinity is not a removable singularity. The next possibility is infinity is a pole in which case the entire function is a polynomial okay and you know the image of a polynom of a polynomial map is the whole plane okay because a polynomial can assume all will assume all values okay you, you take any value you can equate to the polynomial and you can solve for it and you will get uh, solutions that is because of the fundamental theorem of algebra. So if you take a polynomial mapping it will be the image of the whole plane under the under a polynomial mapping will be the whole plane. Then uh, you look at the third case namely when infinity is an essential singular point okay. Now if infinity is an essential singular point okay uh, you see uh, what does uh, the uh, what does the big Picard theorem say the big P Picard theorem says that you take any neighborhood of an essential singular point no matter how small the image will be the whole plane and or it may be a punctured plane it might miss at one point okay. Now you see this is a uh, so what you are saying is that if I take a transcendental entire function okay for example e power z or sin z or cos z okay then the big Picard theorem will tell you that even if you take the image of not the whole plane but the exterior of a circle no matter of how large radius you will still get the whole plane or the punctured plane and you can compare it to the little Picard theorem which tells you that the image of the whole plane is either the whole plane or the plane minus a point. So I want you to understand the significance see if I take for example take e power z okay uh, the, the little Picard theorem will tell you that the image of e power z is either the whole plane or it is the whole plane minus a point because you know it is e power z we know it is the plane minus the origin okay. But the, uh, the little Picard theorem never tells you what is the image of uh, anything other than uh, the whole plane okay. But if you apply the big Picard theorem to e power z okay you are applying mind you when I apply the big Picard theorem to e power z I am trying to apply uh, I am trying I have to apply it only to an essential singularity. And where does e power z have an essential singularity at infinity? So if I apply the big Picard theorem to e power z at, at infinity, okay, then you see that you take any neighborhood of infinity, okay, which is you take the outside uh, the region exterior to a circle of uh, any radius, no matter how large, the image of that itself will be the whole plane or a punctured plane. 
okay and in fact it uh, every value is taken infinitely many times. So you see you see in that sense how the big Picard theorem is far far stronger than the little Picard theorem in the case of entire functions you can see that of course for polynomials then there is nothing special because you, you have fundamental theorem of algebra which will tell you things very clearly but if you are looking at non polynomials if you are looking at transcendental entire functions you see you can really see the 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 amount of uh, uh, difference uh, uh, in 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 the in the conclusion uh, yeah, and, and you can see the strength of the theorem the 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 you see the great picard theorem tells you much more than the little picard theorem okay so if you take e power z and you take the image of the exterior of a circle no matter how large radius it will still be the punctured plane okay that is what the uh, big Picard theorem applied to E power z will tell you okay whereas if you try to apply the little Picard theorem you will not get anything it will give you only the image of the whole plane but it will not tell you anything about the image of the exterior of a circle okay so in that sense you see how powerful the big Picard theorem is okay. Now uh, what I want to do next is uh, tell you about uh, tell you about meromorphic functions okay. So you see uh, so I want to concentrate on meromorphic functions and you know uh, we need to study meromorphic functions uh, in order to get to our main aim which is the proof of the Picard theorems alright. So uh, the, the first fact about meromorphic functions is that you see uh, uh, they the, if you take a domain. Uh, either the domain may be in the plane or it may be a, a domain in the extended plane which means it could include the point at infinity as an interior point. On a domain if you look at the set of meromorphic functions on that domain that is automatically a field okay so you get an algebraic structure called a field and it will be an extension field of the uh, field of uh, complex numbers okay. So and, and this field extension uh, its algebraic properties are deeply connected with uh, the geometric properties of the domain you're you're studying. Okay, so uh, so let me so let me make that statement. Uh, so let me go go to the next thing, uh, the field of meromorphic functions. So. So let me recall uh, uh, what is a meromorphic function uh, so it is basically a function which is analytic and has only isolated singularities which can be at most poles okay of course they could be uh, removable singularities but if they are removable singularities you really do not consider them because they are actually points where the function is analytic okay uh, and uh, uh, otherwise the only honest singularities that it has are poles okay. So so the moment I am talking about a meromorphic function uh, I have to remember that first of all what is allowed is what what kind of singularities are allowed are only poles which means that there are only isolated singularities there are no non isolated singularities okay there are only isolated singularities and they these isolated singularities are actually only poles okay. And the point is that you see uh, if you if you look at a meromorphic function uh, in the extended plane okay uh, then you see that uh, uh, since an isolated set in the extended plane has to have only finitely many points okay because the extended plane is compact okay uh, therefore there will be only finitely many poles okay. So the moral of the story is that if you are looking at a meromorphic function on the extended plane it will have only finitely many poles okay. I think probably I will stop here.